Welcome to the 700 Club Canada, and thank you for joining us today. And Lori, we are just having a, a powerful time this week, and God's been doing some amazing things. Well, as usual, Brian, but today is a special day, and some of our viewers may not have been watching yesterday. Mm. We made our special announcement that you are wrapping up a 10-year season with 700 Club Canada, my friend. I want to thank you right from the top, but... There's so much to come in this show, Brian, because we have so many ways we want to give tribute to you <laughs> and thank you and cheer you on as you continue on your, on this journey. You're never, you're just never slowing down, are you? Well, you know what? Um, to everything, there's a season. Yeah. And uh, and the Lord has uh, been very gracious to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, as much as I owe Him, I'll never stop working. Yeah, that's what I love about you. That's <laughs> what I love about you. You love the gospel. You love people, like you are on mission every day of the week, no matter what your assignment is, right? That's how you live your life. Well, you know, after uh, <laughs> after the Lord got a hold of me, you know, he really, uh, he, he, he sold me that this is the most important work that you can do. And it is also worth giving everything that you have to every day of your life and every moment. Well, I remember the first time I met you, Brian, and I was a guest on the show. <laughs> and you spoke so profoundly into my life that day. I don't mm. know if you remember what you said to me, mm. but you, after the show was done, we stood there for quite a long time because we had a very similar heart and passion about the gospel going out in Canada. Amen. And you said, Lori, there's a national calling on you. Mm -hmm. And I knew, you know, that God, whatever God wanted me to do, I would do. But I never knew that I would have the privilege of sitting beside you in that national calling. So yeah. thank you, my friend. You well, trained me up. Well, you know what? Uh, God put that call and that fire inside of you. And uh, Ms. Hartshorn, you have, you have held it with elegance and just absolute uh, great stewardship. So uh, Thank you. kudos to you and, well, and God's work in you and through you. Well, it's just begun, Brian. We got a special guest. Ready? Huh? We're going to welcome Pastor Rick Shiramatero to the show. He's joining us via <laughs> Zoom. Surprise. I know you didn't know this was coming. <laughs> but here is Pastor Rick. My friend Brian, my friend Lori, what ah. an honor to what an honor to be with you today on this last day. I'm so yeah. sad and inside because I love seeing you and your voice across Canada. You're you're just an incredible gift mm. to all of us in the mm. body of Christ, Brian. Your love, your passion for pastors for the gospel, and I'm talking the true, real deal gospel. Mm. Yes. You've never been afraid. You've never backed down from speaking the truth, but you've always done it in a gracious way, a kind way, and a loving way. And what an honor it is for me to be here with you today, Brian, just to affirm you on the future of what God has for you. You've been incredible with generations. The thing that Kathy and I have all uh, been reminded of mm is your love for generations, from little children, just seeing how they just come around you, how you just welcome them, how you embrace them, your love for nations, but your love for teenagers, your love for the preteens, mm. and now even these seniors that are over here now. You've never you've just connected with all spheres of the society today. And Brian, your influence and your compassion, it has spoken volumes of the character and the man that you are. Mm -hmm. Whenever you've addressed your lovely wife, Karen, it's mm -hmm. always been with the highest respect. It's always been with the highest honor. Whenever you even address individuals that maybe didn't even see things the same way, mm -hmm. you always treated them with the highest respect and the highest honor. God bless you. And for Kathy and I, we want to say, Brian Warren, you're the real deal. Mm -hmm. We want to say we love you. We want to say we appreciate you. And we're going to miss you on the program. But we know that God has incredible things for you in the weeks and the months and the years to come. This is not the end. It's, a, it's another start for something else that God has for you. And I believe that doors already are wide open for you. Mm. But the things that are before you, you're just going to tap into another whole dimension because God's favor mm. is upon you. God's hand is upon you. You are a man mm. that has been led by the Spirit of God. Mm. And so, Brian, we bless you today. Mm. We honor you. And, and just what a treat for us to be here for these few minutes with you on the program today. You mean a lot to me. Mm. You mean a lot to us at Ministers Network Canada. 
But I can't tell you how many pastors have commented on the influence and the impact that you have had personally upon their life. You're loved, you're valued, and you're esteemed incredibly across this nation, my friend. God bless you, my friend. Words cannot uh, describe. Yeah. You caught me off guard, you, you rascal. <laughs> oh, goodness. Got to be a That's few surprises. Surprise. <laughs> Brian, so afraid uh, of every word. What, what do you have to say, my friend? Uh, you know, <laughs> oh, we put, not much, not yeah. right. You know what? I, I gotta, um, gotta, uh, I've gotta process a whole lot of what's going on, you know, and uh, and uh, just celebrating. I mean, when you when you get a chance to hang out with guys like that, I mean, just just absolute sweetness personified. Mm -hmm. um, the sheer materials, both Kathy and, and Rick and yourself. Um, all I could do is say uh, how grateful I am to be able to be in that company. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Rick's well said, my friend. Well said. A leader of the nations, mm. right? This is who Brian is. And I agree with you. What you see on camera, it's the same off camera. And that authenticity is so important. And that's who mm. Brian Warren is. And that's what I love about you, Brian. I well, love that. I, I think we should be going to a testimony or something else right about now. Yeah. Think, you know, because, because, my goodness, the uh, lights are very warm today. And uh, well, Rick, we're going to give you a final word here before we thank you for uh, taking the time to say hello <laughs> and to wish Brian well. We'll give you the closing word. Uh, Brian, I'd just like to pray over you, if I may, just mm. as you. Uh, enter into this new era and really from the depths of Kathy in my heart and all of us that know you, you are valued. You are a special man. You're, mm. you're a connector in the kingdom. And I believe that that's what's going to be happening more and more in every mm. sphere that you touch. So, mm. Father, thank you for Brian. Thank you for his love. Thank you for his compassion. Thank you, Father, for the goodness of God that has just directed him. Uh, at this to this here point in his life, but I thank you for outrageous favor that thank is you. going before him in the days of him. Mm. I thank you that you will open up incredible doors, even greater, even things that he, he's never even dreamed of before, mm. for this is his time. And I thank you that his gift has made room, and I thank you for the love that he has for mm. all of us mm. and all those that have been impacted by it. In mm. Jesus' name, mm. we bless him and release him with the hand and the favor and the breath of God upon him. In Jesus' name, Dad, amen. 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 Love you. Mm. I love you a lot, Brian. I look for doing life together with you out there. Amen. God mm. bless. Yeah. Thank you, Rick. Well, another look back at Brian's time on the 700 Club Canada. I gave her a, a bogus verse. Uh-huh. I love barbecue. I love to I love the barbecue. I love to barbecue brisket. I love to barbecue in the morning. I can barbecue in the afternoon. This is true. I, when I was playing football yeah. and everything, getting ready for a game, I was rocking out. I was like, Yeah. And now you're rocking out for Jesus. Oh well, yeah. Well, chest right, to the ground. Four. Perfect. Three, two. God bless. Do you want to hug it out? Oh, no. No. I mean, your mouth is literally going to have <laughs> a summer fiesta. Welcome to this Hope to Go. <laughs> Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. How did you know that was coming? <laughs> it's still there. <laughs> well, and we have snowflakes. Oh. Oh, there you go. Merry Christmas, Brian. And a wonderful and a happy New Year. I've been YouTube certified to be now a camera operator, and I've also I been know. YouTube certified to be barber <laughs> and, uh, and techie. Episode 2045, Brian Audio A1. And I've had a soul goal every time. Have I you? don't tell everyone, but I, I keep praying, and every time I say, God, please, this yeah. is how many souls. Amen that none should perish. There's so many things in this society that would try to bind us and hold us back from what God's perfect plan is for our life. 
what better way to see Israel than from the tops of the city of gold? We are here in the old city of Jerusalem. I believe, man of God, woman of God, your child is coming home, that prodigal today, and we agree by faith in the name of Jesus. Whatever you're going through, God's word has a promise for you. I'm so grateful to God because of what he has uh, uh, allowed us to uh, be a part of. The gift of righteousness, peace, and joy. We have the gift of justice in Jesus. I ask you to be the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Heather Heck was raised by a single mother. When she was 12 years old, Heather found out who her father was. Even though he was never around, Heather longed to know him. Although I had a, a really loving family, there was a piece of me that was missing. You know, I, I wanted to know who my dad was. I wanted to have a relationship with him. I remember being a kid and watching other fathers interact with their daughters, and, and it was something that I always wanted for myself. Several years later, Heather finally got a chance to meet her father. I was 18 years old, very excited that, that this man wanted to attempt to have a relationship with me. And so when I knocked on the door, a, an aunt answered the door and looked at me and said, this isn't a good time. And about that time, I saw my father walk behind her through the hall, look at me and continue to, to walk by. And for whatever reason, um, he didn't want to see me. And after that night, I stopped trying. And it began to spiral. All of these feelings that I had bottled up for years, um, just feeling like I wasn't good enough, that I wasn't worthy to be loved, this the feeling of being rejected. Um, and for me, it was really the turning point in my own lifestyle. From that point, I didn't want to feel anything. And I really turned to, to drugs and alcohol after that point just to be numb. Heather had grown up in the church and learned about God's love for her. But her drug and alcohol abuse had blinded her to what she knew to be true. So I didn't have to deal with the hurt or the brokenness or even deal with all of these emotions of, about my father, or just feeling inadequate. Um, I liked the way that drugs and alcohol made me feel because I didn't have to feel anything. Heather got pregnant and had a son, Jonah. Even though she was a single mom, her lifestyle still revolved around drugs and alcohol. One night after smoking pot and excessive drinking, Heather was riding in a car with her friend. The driver, also drinking, crashed into another car, killing those two people instantly. Heather was charged with DUI by allowance. And I remember the investigator looks at me and he says, do you have any idea what happened here tonight? And I, I said, no. And he took the couple that passed away, he took their driver's license and he threw them at me across the table. And he said, you, you've murdered these two people. And that's really when the weight of um, the full weight of what the reality of what had happened, that's when it hit me. And I remember looking down at this couple's face that I'll never know and knowing that because of me and my actions, they weren't going home to see their family. The accident threw Heather into a deep depression. I had the audacity to be angry at God throughout all of it because I was angry at him because he took them and he left me. And I knew I didn't deserve to live. A week later, Heather's mom asked her to go to church with her. Heather agreed to go. I think that in that moment, I finally heard the gospel with my heart and not my head. And I realized that the weight that I was carrying was this weight of sin. But you see, Jesus had come to take that weight so I could be free. I walked down to the altar and it was a, I was a mess. And a woman at the front, she stepped out and met me and brought me back with her and helped me walk the rest of the way. That day, for the first time in my life, it, it was as if I finally got it, that God loved me with this unending, never failing, all consuming love. No matter how hard I tried to run from him, he pursued me. He never gave up and really started thinking about what kind of love 
would go to those kind of links and then it dawned on me the kind of love that would die on a cross. Heather asked Jesus into her heart that day. Women from the church loved her and taught her what it meant to be a Christian. I had a woman who was patient with me and she just began to walk with me and break things down like repentance and baptism. And, and little by little, God was shifting things and I was changing. And I didn't even realize that he was doing it because it wasn't that I had to try or strive. It's just the more that we got in the word, the more he just began to renew me. A year after the deadly DUI, the case finally went to trial. Heather pled guilty to felony charges and had to serve one year in prison. We began a Bible study there in this maximum security facility every day, and we grew to almost 30 women, and the entire atmosphere in that place began to shift. We saw signs and wonders and miracles, and I saw as one by one these women begin to give their lives to Jesus. Heather also learned to forgive her father, who had passed away years before. Forgiveness is a hard thing because it wasn't letting him off the hook, but it was just really kind of taking back the power. It was a really healing moment. And, and the truth is, unless we forgive them, how can God forgive us? And who are we you know, to hold anything against anyone? Heather never knew her earthly father, but her heavenly father was there all along. Every little girl wants a hero, a knight in shining armor that will rescue her. And um, it's the beauty of God, you know, when you begin to understand the father heart of God. And really, you know, he is the father to the fatherless. And he heals all things, all wounds, and he fills every, em every bit of emptiness with his love. Today, Heather works for a campus ministry called Every Nation. She says the leaders of tomorrow are on the college campuses of today. Heather loves to share the gospel of Christ with students whenever and wherever she can. My spiritual journey has been more of just really the story of restoration. You know, I know that many times we think about the cross, we just think about salvation, but this, see the thing is the cross doesn't just bring salvation, it brings restoration. And looking back at my life and the mess that was there, you know, the one thing that sums up what Jesus has done is he has restored everything that was broken. And that's exactly what Jesus does. He restores everything that is broken. You know, when you listen to Heather, you recognize that that void that we all have within our heart to know our father. She didn't know her earthly father. But the Bible says that in Psalm 7, 68, if my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take up my cause. I wonder if you're in the same situation as Heather. Today, I want to I wanna give something to you, and I will not embarrass you, but I believe this is critical that you get this today, and it's forgiveness. It doesn't cost you anything. 1-855-759-0700. Prayer partners are standing by. Just request this because many times what we need is we need to give forgiveness, but we also need to forgive ourselves as well. Because the Bible makes it very clear that all of us have messed up. We've blown it royally, but the Lord has given us an out. And that miracle that you said it's happening in prison, it can happen in your life right now. Why don't you pray this prayer with me? And this is just saying, Jesus, I let go. I forgive even as I want to be forgiven. I turn from doing things my way and I turn to you. Lord, help me. Release today in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've done that, call the number on the screen. But today, I believe that God has untied you from whatever you'd been held back by. So tomorrow is going to be a new day. Give us a call, though. We'll be right back. At the 700 Club Canada, we are on a mission to rescue people and bring them to life. Will you join us in this rescue mission? It can be as simple as $20 a month or join us at one of our other monthly partner levels. Or maybe you're able to give a generous annual gift 
Call us today at 1-855-759-0700 or you can easily give online at 700club.ca. God bless you. Today, I want to talk to you in this Hope to Go about position for transition. Why is transition often so difficult? Because it's an in-between place. It's the place where faith is tested. Transition is also the time where you're tempted to grumble and complain and longing to go back to the same old and the familiar. Bottom line, transition is where you either break through or you break down. It's where you show God by your actions and by your servant attitude that you're more interested in following him than being self-serving. Now, transition has three basic components. Letting go, and then you got to let go of the old, but you got to trust. And number three, accepting the new positioning. Now, when you start thinking about transition, I want you to get this. Transition begins with a choice, a decision. If there's more, I want it, God. If there's a better way, I want to learn it. God, I choose your way over my way. Spiritual commercial. When you go camping, you leave your microwave and you leave your curling iron at home. And you anticipate something may happen out of the ordinary. But you also trust that your preparation and and, uh, what you have prepared for is going to help you in this great adventure. Now, that's part of the excitement of camping, and that's the adventure of experiencing new and different things outside of our control. The big hope truth, that positioning for transitioning is all about like camping. It's facing the future fearlessly, knowing that you're on a God journey, and the one who brought you to this journey is the same one who's leading you through it. I believe this is the reason that God would lead the children of Israel through the wilderness with the cloud by day and also the pillar of fire by night. Exodus chapter 40 and 36 and 38, this is a New Living Translation. It says this, now, whenever the cloud lifted from the tabernacle, the people of Israel would set out on their journey following it. In verse 37, it says, but if the cloud did not rise, they remained where they were until it lifted. Verse 38, the cloud of the Lord hovered over the tabernacle during the day and the night, and the fire glowed inside the cloud so the whole family of Israel could see it. This continued throughout all their journeys. Did you get that? God's part was to lead the way by pillar of cloud or pillar of fire. Israel's part was to stay positioned for transition. In other words, they were to live every moment with an attitude of readiness to move when the cloud moved. Now, this was put in the scriptures to illustrate to us that we are never to get stuck and stale following God. You know, there has to be a sensitivity to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Jesus declared in John 16, 12, this is the New Living Translation again, there is so much more that I want to tell you, but you can't bear it right now. Verse 13, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth and he will not speak of his own, but will tell you what he has heard and he will tell you about the future. Did you get that? The cloud and the fire are not in the natural and the physical visible arena anymore. Now that cloud and that pillar of fire is inside of you. 2 Corinthians 4, 7, and this is a New Living Translation. It says this, we now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure that makes, this makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. Now, the Holy Spirit leads us from the inside, but it's just as real and is just as as palpable as he did with the children of Israel. There is a shift taking place right now in this nation and in this globe, this generation. And I believe something very powerful is happening. And God is sending this word to you and to me to remind us of the joy in the journey. You got to remember Position for transition is not a scary thing. It's a beautiful God adventure. And that's your hope to go. Enter his gates. 
with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Psalm 104. It's been a special show, hasn't it, Brian? <laughs> Surprises. I know it might catch well, you a little speechless, which is hard to find you without <laughs> words. But we have a gift for you, Brian. Wow. A beautiful, um, well, it says on this, if I can read it without my glasses, one of your verses that defines you, my friend, go, mm. go into all the world and preach the gospel to every nation. Is that not you? That's your heart. Uh, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for uh, being such a godly example to so many. I, do I slide this down? Oh, you know, I it, know we have to keep our distance, but I'm just going to well, pass that on to yeah. you. There. You can take a good look at that. On behalf of uh, all the viewers, Brian, from all of our team here at 700 Club, we love you, we thank you, and we bless you. God bless you. And just going to pray for you, okay? Mm. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I bless my brother Brian. I bless him for his faithfulness, for his commitment to love and serve you all the days of his life. I pray that the strength of God would just overwhelm him each day. I pray for favor and every open door for him. I pray for great joy and peace in his life that he would know that you are so pleased with him, Father. Well done, good and faithful servant. We bless you, Brian Warren. We thank you as our brother, as a fellow Canadian, and as a follower of the Lord Jesus, we say, go with God every day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Final words, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And uh, the joy is in the journey. The joy is in the journey. <laughs> and what a joyful journey. Yeah. Let's continue to see what God will do as yeah. we continue to journey. Yeah. Love you all. Mm. Colossians 1.15, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. <laughs> he existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. And isn't that the one you follow most That's the one wholeheartedly? To follow. That's the one you follow. God bless. Thanks for watching. To contact us, phone 1 855 759 0700. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram.